Hello guys, it's Mashtag here. In today's video, I want to show you how you can easily scrape your ROMs for emulation station on your RG350. Therefore, we're gonna use a tool called Scraper. I will also show you in this video how to configure Scraper to get the best results for emulation station on the RG350. Enjoy! Alright guys, so first of all we need to download Scraper. And therefore I put you a link into the video description that will take you to Scraper's homepage. And this is where you will find the download button up here. Just simply click on it and it will ask you to define the operating system you're running on. In my case it is Windows, so I'm gonna click on download for Windows. And this little pop-up window here will inform you that Scraper currently is in a beta version or in a beta status. But no matters guys, it still works great. So just simply click on download for Windows and wait until the download's complete. All right, now that we've downloaded Scraper, we wanna switch over to our download folder and we're gonna extract the content of the 7-zip achieve here. If you don't have 7-zip installed to your PC, I'm gonna put you the link into the video description. Alright guys, now that we've extracted Scraper, we can just start the application. Therefore, enter the directory we just extracted from the archive, and there you will find the scraperui.exe. Just double click on it to start Scraper. Now, the first time Scraper starts, you should run the wizard. Therefore, just click on the wizard symbol down there and start the wizard. Now, you actually don't need an account to run Scraper. I created an account, but to show you guys that it's really not required, you can just choose I don't have an account and I don't want to register and choose yes, I'm sure and continue down here by pressing to the next button. Now. In the next step, we want to choose Recall Box as our front end selection because Recall Box matches the best to Emulation Station. Click on Next, and in the next step, we have to choose our ROM folder. Now, I've inserted my SD card from the RG350 to my PC, and check Include Non Recall Box Folders before you click on that little folder symbol up here. All right, now it's time to choose the ROM folder. And since this is my SD card and I have my ROM folder right on it, I'm just gonna choose this ROMs folder here and confirm by pressing OK. Now, as you can see, Scraper finds all the systems that are located in that folder. Um, and to finish, we can hit the next button. Now it's going to show us that it will create a gameless XML file for us and prepare some images as box art. Now click on next to jump back to Scraper. And now it's time to configure Scraper for Emulation Station. Okay, before we start, let me say a few words about Scraper. On the left hand side of the UI, you will see the systems that you currently have selected. On the very top side, you have a selection for all systems. So if we start configuring for all systems, it has a global effect. So that means all co configurations are gonna be applied to all the systems. If you wanna make individual configurations for single systems, we wanna choose them from the list down here. For example, let's do it for the Nintendo Entertainment System. Therefore, just choose Nintendo Entertainment System here from the list and you will see that it is selected if you take a look down here. So the next step is going to be to go through some of the configuration tabs up here. First of all, let's start with the Games and Front End tab and ensure that we still have selected Recall Box as our front end. Now that this is the case, let's switch over to Game List. And here I recommend you to do some specific configurations. So just check the box Use Specific Configuration for NES. Ensure that the game list type is set to Emulation Station Game List.xml. And I don't like the backup existing and then create a new configuration option here. I always switch it over to No Backup and create new or override existing. 
I check this because imagine in future you're gonna add some more ROMs. You just wanna put your SD card back to your PC, scrape again and just overwrite all the existing stuff without having all these backups in your ROM folder. So the next step where we have to do some configuration is gonna be the media tab. So let's switch over to the media tab and to apply changes here, we first have to select use specific configuration for NES. So check this box up here and to prevent Scraper from creating two kind of images, we want to hit the minus button up here to reduce our selection to just one image. So as you can see, the media type down here is selected as image. This is what I prefer. And I actually don't like the box 3D too much. I just prefer the box 2D images. Now, the next field we want to edit is the output folder. And as you can see, it already has a placeholder for our ROM root folder, which is on our SD card. And we want to remove the following up folders called media and images and replace them by a folder named box art. Okay. And in the original configuration, the resize of the width and height might be unchecked. We want to change the width and height. So please check these two boxes and reduce the width to 150 pixels and the height to 150 pixels as well. All right. Now everything is prepared already. Miscellaneous and overlays is something we don't have to touch. So we just have to press the play button down here to make scrapers start scraping our ROMs. Now scraper starts scraping our ROMs. Now we just have to wait some time until it's finished. Okay, the scrape process is done. So confirm it by pressing the button on the lower right corner and it jumps back to scraper. Now we can close Scraper and see what it created for us. Therefore, we want to switch over to our SD card. And I have mine selected here already, okay. So navigate to your ROMs folder. And since we did some changes to the Nintendo Entertainment System, jump into the Nintendo Entertainment System folder. And as you can see, Scraper created a box art subfolder for us and created the game list XML file. Let's take a short look into the box art folder. Let's change the view to big images. And as you can see, it added all the box arts of the games located into our Nintendo Entertainment folder. Now let's jump back. And now we want to insert the SD card to our RG350 and run emulation station. Okay, I've inserted the SD card back to my RG350. Now switch over to emulators and choose emulation station and start it. Okay, here we are in emulation station. Now let's switch over to the Nintendo Entertainment System and check if we have the box arts in there. And yeah, here we go. So as you can see, the box arts are in the list and all in all, it was a pretty easy process. Now for the first time you have set up the configuration in Scraper, you can always reuse it in future. So if you add more games, you can just rerun Scraper directly on your SD card. Okay guys, before we come to the end of this video, I would like to demonstrate you a common problem that comes along with your ROM names when you create the game list XML file using Scraper or any other Scraper tool. So there's this problem when the name of your ROM contains special characters. And I faced this problem when I scraped ROMs like Pokemon or Asterix and Obelix because it has a apostrophe on the top of the E. And I want to quickly show you what I mean. And therefore, I'm just going to scrape my um, Game Boy section. So I go over to Game Boy, go over to Games Font, ensure front end is set to recall box, check the game list, and 
and sure it is set to emulation station gameless.xml no backup create or override existing and switch over to media ensure you have a specific configuration for Game Boy. My preferred um, setting here is 2D box arts. So that's what I choose from these two um, option menus here. Um, also ensure that the output folder is set to output folder backslash box art and resize the image to 150 times 150. Remember, the screen resolution of the RG350 is only 320 times 240, so it absolutely makes no sense to have image sizes of 800 times 600 or something. Um, it only ends up in long loading times for your ROMs when you scroll through the list and it unnecessarily takes space on your SD card. So reduce it to something lower than 200 and you should be fine. But I would recommend you to keep the image ratio so that the images are still in a good shape. Okay, this is all we have to do. So let's create this quickly. Oh, I love this satisfying sound at the end of a complete process. Do you guys know where it's from? Leave it in the comments. Um, okay, now confirm by pressing the OK button on the lower right corner. And now let's take a look on the SD card and see what Scraper created for us. So I'm going to ROMs, Game Boy, and as you can see, it already has the box art folder here and we have the game list XML file. Now let's have a quick look into it because I have a special ROM here that shows special characters in his name and what I'm actually talking about is a game called Asterix and Obelix and if we would run emulation station with this game list file and load the Game Boy system to see our ROMs it would instantly crash. Let's start emulation station and see what happens when it tries to load that game list. All right, as you guys might mention, I switched back to one of the default themes in Emulation Station. This is because the problem only appears in the default themes. So now let's switch over to Game Boy and try to load the game list in Game Boy. And as you can see, it instantly crashes. Now, I mentioned it happens um, to two kinds of games for me. It was Asterix and Obelix and some of the Pokemon games. It's just because they have this E with the apostrophe on it. This problem can simply be resolved or simply be solved by exchanging the E with the apostrophe to a normal E in the game list XML file. Now let's switch back to our PC and let me show you where you have to change the name to get rid of this problem. So what I recommend you guys is just to do a quick search and replace in your gameless XML file. So find this E with the apostrophe and replace it with a normal E. So as you can see, I have five appearances of this E with the apostrophe on it, but I'm just gonna replace them all and everything is fine. Now let me tell you about an alternative solution for this problem. It's simply to install the NBBA theme that I recently showed you in my previous video. Um, I found out that the NBBA theme can handle these special characters in the ROM names. And I have to take a deeper look into the configuration of the theme where the names are handled. And if I find out how it's being solved in the theme configuration, I'm gonna make a new video and show how to fix the default themes for emulation station with the same thing. All right guys, I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to give me a like, subscribe and share the video. If you don't like it, then go and show it to your worst enemy. I thank you for watching and hope to see you guys in my next video. Bye.